Cross the Posting. For an 8-channel Mackie MC from 2001 on Reverb for $89. $19 shipped. And they said the only thing wrong with it was... Hey, man, Fader 1 might have some issues. So what do you say to an offer that good? You say yes. It showed up. It wasn't a brick. I was very surprised. Took it out of the box, plugged it in. Let's see if I can take care of those faders. Pulled it apart. Pulled out the faders. Fader 1 and the master fader was dead. Come to find out, the faders are $45 a piece. So I did what most would do. Put the faders back in and just disabled them. One was completely dead. Unfortunately, eight, the string broke. And restringing that just doesn't seem doable. Or I don't want to do it bad enough. And the master fader, which was originally the first fader. Hmm. It's seen better days. Out of the box, with a door, everything seems to work logically. Including the jog dial. That's what I wanted, was the jog dial. I was so happy when I reached over and turned it. And the playhead moved. Everything else is good. Transport, you record, stop, play, fast forward, rewind. Works as expected. Zoom? Zoom's a neat feature. We can zoom into the timeline and zoom out of the timeline. Up and down will inbegin and debegin your tracks. Like, that's, that's kind of neat. When it's not in zoom mode, it just jumps the playhead around, which is still handy. And you can do track select with up and down. I should mention there's a printout for the top of the Mackie on the Adora website in the forums. But, you see what I did with the function keys? You can switch between mixer and editor mode. Everything else, it works as expected. The faders, they are motorized, so you can move them up and down. With a mouse, because that's neat. Ghost fader. Solo works. Um, the rotary dials by default will pan left and right. Fader banks, they do work. I don't know how many layers you can go into, but I was very interested in the function keys because you can reprogram them, kind of. While there are a ton of options for transport, editing, rulers, snap, zoom, mixer, I couldn't find the ability to do the one thing I wanted to do. Activate a plugin. Yeah. It's just, just not there. Let me see. I can drag this into music. So if we are recording live, I would like to be able to activate the plugin window, or at the very least, be able to adjust the threshold and ratio on a compressor. Or at the very very least, be able to activate or disable a plugin while we were recording for something like reverb effect. I was told this was impossible. However, it might be something to look forward to in the future. I still had the sads. And if I'm going to be honest with you, at this point, I'd had my fun. I'd replaced the capacitors on this and I'd at the time, right up until this, I was thinking I maybe I'll spend that $90 on the faders, but mm, no, I, I just this is not going to happen. Our X Touch with the generic MIDI learning mode does what I need it to do, even though I'm going to be denied that wonderful jog dial and those chunky, chunky transport controls. They make a wonderful sound. And there we have it. That was the $89 2001 Mackie MCU Pro. Not Pro, non-Pro. Pro has a USB hole. This, this one did not. Two MIDI ports, old school, classic stuff. You're gonna need that to hook that up. If you didn't know, um, I have a gang of interfaces in the rack. So that wasn't a problem, none whatsoever. But you can pick up a like 20, 15 to $20 USB to MIDI adapter on Amazon or any place like that, and it'll work fine. But, so what are my final thoughts on that wonderful console? Well, 
You see what's back on the desk. That's our um, X-Touch Compat. Why? Because even though I'm deprived of my jog dial, I can map everything I need in MIDI CC. Just the MIDI learn mode. And on door, gets my faders, gets my mutes. Over here, on the far right side, I have my compressors set up. That's something I keep dialed in and play with constantly, just for the makeup gain and the compression um, threshold itself. Up top, I keep that as trim support, and you know, I just pick and choose with record and solos and everything. On the top faders, this does have a Mackie mode, and it's junk. Don't use it. Um, if you have like the full X Touch, that's a little better love story than this, but Behringer does make an X Touch one. So, what I think I'm going to do, because I really want the jog dial and I want those function keys, uh, is run this, because you can run this, it's currently running in USB. Just, I wanted to see if I could, because it's got a USB plug on the back. Easy enough to do with um, A2J, A2J MIDI. Just export that, hooking up, is since it has a USB hub, I could take this, run it in MIDI mode, generic MIDI, program it how I want, and run the X-Touch 1 in its Mackie control mode, which would give me the bits of functionality that I can't quite get in this. As for the super cheap Mackie control surface, I mean, I do have the rest of the capacitors to hopefully like smooth out all of the faders. Those expensive $45 faders. I don't know if I'm going to do that. I probably will get around to it at some point. And that point will be right around when I'm, we, we get some uh, plug-in support in our door because I fired up my copy of uh, Harrison Mix Bus. Paul made the, um, did our door, also works on that. And you can trigger the built-in equalizer using the Q function on the Mackie, but I, I would need full support in our door because just, Harrison Mix Bus, I'm sure somebody likes it. It's got that material design on it that's ancient. And compared to Outdoor, it's horrifically unintuitive. It's just a mess to work with. But yeah, I'm going to stick with this. If you see one, how much should you pay for one? If you can find one in good shape, you're probably going to pay like $200 for it and probably another 30 to 50 in shipping. So if you find one locally, like 200 bucks. Pick it up, keep it in mind. It's a very big unit. Like on this desk, it was all the way out to here. Well, here, I had that much room, like that. And the X-Touch Compat, even though it's the compact version, it's not small by any stretch of the imagination. But keep that in mind and keep in mind that the Penny and Giles faders are no longer made and you're going to pay $45 a pop for them because it seems one person on eBay who has sold hundreds of them, that's what he does. He buys up the parts and rips the faders out and sells them back to people in need. But once you have a good set of faders, you take care of them. You probably never have to replace them. I personally, if you're going to get a Mackie, save up the extra... $200 and get the Mackie MCU Pro, the one with USB, not necessarily for the USB, because they're basically the same thing, but it uses the Alpine faders, which are still made, and they're not $45. They're, they're more reasonably priced, like the um, faders in Behringer's X series, which I think I can get a five pack for $100. Much more reasonable. Oh. Keep that in mind. We learned something. At least I learned something. If you have any thoughts, hints, allegations, leave those in the comments. You got some faders. You want to like throw my way. Let me know. I, I might finish what I started and it won't live its life in a box. More than likely I'll get it. I mean, it's in a workable state right now. I'll find a good home for it because it was 80 bucks. I don't have any plans on selling it. Oh, 
right. Uh, as always, thank you to each and every one of you beautiful people making this show possible, our patrons.